From AIT Studios in Abuja, Nigeria, this is the O and M Sunday Show with Obiora Ilo and Mamode Akuga. Welcome. It's another Sunday afternoon, and it's time again for the O and M Sunday Show. My name is Mamode Akuga, and of course, quite a lot uh, we've put together for you today. Uh, and as usual, first we'll take a look at what's trending, the headlines in the newspapers today, talk a little bit about some of them. And then, uh, of course, we will also uh, be talking about some issues uh, involving the free fall of the Nigerian Naira against the US dollar and against other major currencies in the world. Also, we will be taking a, a look at some infrastructural facilities in the city of Abuja. Well, it's going to be a revelation, talking about roads. Well, my tag team partner is here. I'm Obi Arilo, you're welcome. Uh, it's another Sunday afternoon, and as usual, we're excited knowing that you're sitting by your TV set and being part of this O and M family show. It's actually your show, and today, like Mahmoudi said, we have quite a lot for you. Um, so many that um, you, you don't just take a minute out of the sitting room or wherever you're watching us from because it's a big package. But uh, Mamode, yes. Boko Haram again, well, again, again. They have moved into the uh, soft. Yes, uh, the soft, soft targets. Exactly. And and, uh, I mean, the Nigerian uh, military is doing so much good work, uh, taking back some of the towns that were you know, uh, captured earlier on and under the control of Boko Haram. A lot of those towns and local governments have been recaptured and now in the control fully of the Nigerian military. And Boko Haram has become very frustrated. Uh, their usual strategy is failing or has failed. And so they're, they're going back to, you know, uh, in engaging with soft targets. You know, they go to a marketplace, you know, and then suicide bomber detonates a bomb and you know, uh, several people are dead along the line. But for me, it just shows that uh, we're getting very close to the end of this battle. Yeah, and especially with the military cutting off their supply routes, yes. they, are, they are being suffocated. And there's, um, you know, all those uh, mobile, mobile uh, teams yes. are causing mayhem around yes. uh, the country. Oh, no, th around that same area. Yes, it's, it's it's a lot of it is in Borono, really. Yes. Uh, and there uh, is uh, a talk of uh, some 50-something people dead. The son says uh, suicide bombers invade Borono, uh, you know, and 50-something um, people dead, really. Uh, about 56 is what the son is reporting uh, at this time. Yeah, this day uh, says dozens killed in latest latest yes. Boko Haram hate at soft targets. targets. Yes. Uh, uh, that paper also reports that Buhari, just back from the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. paid homage to Shagari in Sokoto. Yes, well, uh, that's one visit that, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I would have loved to have been there, uh, to, just, <laughs> to just observe the body language. The body language, yeah. Yes, you know, well, I'm very interested. Yeah. You know, of course, the history between uh, Shehu Shagari and, and Buhari. Uh, and Buhari. Uh, Buhari, I mean, uh, toppled his uh, Shagari civilian government in 1983. And that has been a sore point, uh, you know, for a very, very long time. Yeah, Felicia, uh, Mahmoud, I want us to look at this again. Mm -hmm. INECAD readers pass mock exam. Can you read the... the, the but <laughs> not with flying colors. Not <laughs> with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the colors are crawling. Uh, yeah, well, there were, there were a lot of hiccups. There were <laughs> no, a couple of hiccups, a couple uh, of challenges. Yes, but, but, I, but I think in the, in the whole, there uh, is hope. Yes, they, they, well, they're saying that's 90% successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really know whether uh, in this regard 90% success is comfortable. I wouldn't really know. We may have to talk to some INEC people what 90% success will translate to. Okay, Mamode, you know? yesterday again... Um, the president tried to show his vigor and uh, energy yes. and uh, <laughs> young age. You know, it's, been a, it's, become a, it's become an issue in this election. Uh, well, you know, old age and uh, 
you know, and, and being well, young and being healthy and all that. Youthfulness and all that. Youthfulness, yes. You know, the, the campaign, the postponement has actually made it possible for us to see some new dimensions into campaigning in Nigeria. Uh, well, the president was in Abuja with uh, retired and serving sportsmen mm -hmm. um, who coming out in solidarity and promoting fiscal exercise, you know, and uh, took the opportunity to promise a lot in sports, you know, in sports development. While they were doing that, of course, uh, in Lagos, APC was uh, going ahead with his own match, you know, uh, and uh, matching into match and uh, you know <laughs> matching for support for APC. Um, I think earlier on we, we saw uh, some of the uh, well I think Punch captures it very very well. Uh, yes. yes they put them side by side if I could just hold that a little bit for uh, to see. Yeah, well. Yes if you see the two pictures you have there one is of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan you know, exercising, uh, you know, and then the other one is with uh, Professor Oshiba Jo, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and uh, all the heavyweights of APC marching, uh, you know, that, uh, taking that match in Lagos, all trying to promote change. Uh, yes, we, before uh, we conclude what's trending uh, Mamode, we must go to Ebony State where we, we still see the political fireworks going on. Yes. Well, just uh, two days ago on Friday, all the big uh, heavyweights in Ebony were at the presidential villa. They yes. met with the president, and the president is soliciting for a ceasefire. Yeah, a ceasefire. <laughs> you know, some, some kind of reconciliation. Uh, some kind of, of reconciliation. Course, uh, uh, the, the fight and the quarrel will not do pres uh, President Jonathan any good. So uh, it is it's it's in his best interest to have peace in Ebony so that the party can come together as one big formidable force in uh, Boeing State, given uh, the fact that uh, PDP has always been dominant in uh, Boeing yeah, State. Yeah, but you know, the, so the, the stress is that the PDP claim that the governor is still in PDP and then funding a candidate in the Labour Party. Yes. Uh, well, the, the governor denies that, but I heard that substantially to a great extent the president was able to rein everybody in, in and, uh, and uh, there looks like there may there may be some peace in Ebony. So Maybe the after all, we are likely <laughs> going to see the impeachment uh, process thrown the, away. The fire, uh, maybe yeah, doused. They may just throw it away. But <laughs> you know, I always knew that the impeachment in Ebony was more political than you know uh, uh, people who trying to ensure that government was done well. So it's the International it Women's Day. Did you send uh, a text message to Madame today? Uh, I, I will be candid and I will be honest. I have not. Um, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> just 2 p.m. So <laughs> there's, still a lot, that. there's still a lot <laughs> in the day. But um, this year's theme, the celebration of the Women's uh, Day, is empowering women, empowering humanity. Well, is there time to reflect on the progress made to call for change and to celebrate acts of common and, I mean, of courage and determination by yes. ordinary women who have played an extraordinary role in the history of their countries and communities? And when we come back home well, in Nigeria, yeah, there are so, so many, many of them. Um, I mean, let me just quickly run through uh, Fumilaya Ransom Kuti. Mm -hmm. We all remember her, politician, politician uh, women's rights women activist, rights activist, mother of the great Fela legendary Lagbo, yes, Kuti. Kuti, you know. Mm -hmm. So so many of them Ladi Ladi Kuali, Kuali, pioneer yeah. of modern poetry poetry in Nigeria. Yes. Queen Amina, a, a Zaria woman warrior, mm -hmm. uh, Margaret Ekpo, foremost activist, oh, yeah. uh, Chimanda Dichi, the novelist, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Dora Akili, a blessed memory, uh, Agbani Darego, Miss World two thousand one, Flora and Wakba, uh, who's a writer, publisher and uh, you know Onyeka Owenu, musical, well, musical icon. icon of course uh, yes, we uh, have Mary Onyali queen of the track uh, Kudirata Biola fighter for democracy few, in Nigeria uh, yes. so many of them yeah, so and many. of course we have my dear wife who's also contributed to the growth of the country <laughs> and your wife too uh, Mamude <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, we say kudos to our women today. Um, for taking care of the home front. Yes, don't, don't go sleeping. I mean, it's work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, so much can still be achieved. Of course, with 35% uh, 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 affirmative, affirmative action. action yes. um, there's mm -hmm. so much the women can do in the exactly. country. Exactly. Well, uh, on our program today, very shortly, we'll begin with the first interview. We're going to take a look at the free fall 
of the Nigerian Naira against the very free fall, very free fall, alarming fall uh, uh, yes. of the Naira. How is that beautiful? How is that wonderful? Because a lot of it was deliberate, the devaluation of the Naira. We're going to look at all that. And then yes, we have um, Dr. Chuku Emeka Eke. Um, yes. I'm sure our cameras are showing our guests right now. We have Dr. Chuku Emeka Eke of the Department of Economics, University of Abuja. And we have uh, Leonard Obaja, trade policy analyst. He has, uh, I mean, Leonard has been involved in trade policy processes in Nigeria and the ECOWAS region yeah. since 2007. Mm -hmm. And how about the infrastructure in Abuja? So many housing estates. Yes, you so get many. into the housing estates, you think you're somewhere in the UK, you think you're somewhere in the United States. But getting there, the roads leading to oh those my God. some of those roads, terrible roads in terrible Abuja, roads. and and Obira, we're not talking suburbs, we're not talking of satellite towns. Mm -hmm. Abuja itself, in Abuja, some of the roads you would not believe that these roads are in the federal capital. Mamo, the Sunnyville, Sunnyville, one of the oldest in Abuja, if not the oldest. Yes. I mean modern estates. The roads into that estate. Uh, leading into so many estates, Simgoba Estate, Kabusa Gardens. There are too many. There are too many on, on that was, axis. I was reading somewhere, and they said there's about thirty-eight thousand or something houses. Yes, um, I mean, so in, in that area. Yes, I mean, it, it's just so much. So later, we're going to look at that. Look at the road. Mm -hmm. Look at what the FCT is doing, and why they've not been able uh, to take care of that road. And then, Obiora, I'm sure we have a young uh, uh, artist who will be on the sofa later as well. Yeah, we have a uh, uh, El Kudi. You know these young men, the way they come with their names. I, ho I hope <laughs> I hope I got it right. El Kudi. Oh, you know, some of them say they are shake yeah. or they are this, <laughs> but he plays some good music. I must tell you, my yes. body. And so, uh, uh, and we know we'll, we'll find out how he has been able to do yes, it. Yes, and later we'll take a look at that. Well, it's the Sunday uh, show, and uh, don't you go away. We'll be right up uh, after this timeout. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You're watching the O and M Sunday show, your family show. And um, right away, we are inviting our first set of guests as we look at um, the free fall, very free fall of the Naira. We yes. have um, Dr. Uh, Chuku Emeka Eke of the Department of, Ec of Economics, University of Abuja. And we have uh, Leonard Obaja, who is a, a lawyer by training, that is a trade policy analyst. Gentlemen. Uh, can you join us now <laughs> as we look at this uh, very, very disturbing issue for a lot of Nigerians? You're welcome, Leonard. Thank welcome, you. Leonard. Thank Doc, you. you're welcome. Thank you very much. Mm. Doc. <coughs> yeah. Well, the Naira. Um, maybe, maybe we should uh, start with uh, Dr. Eke so that we can get some basics out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to let me confess, I'm like most Nigerians. Okay. You know, I don't understand the dynamics of, you know, how a currency goes up, comes down. But I understand what devaluation means. Yeah. It means as if it was 150 before, it's now, you know, uh, trading less 
maybe somewhere around 180 and uh, I know that it, it's deliberately been brought down. What's all this story about the free fall of the Nigerian What's Island? going on? How did we get here? Yeah. Mm, actually, um, just as a preamble, yeah. uh, it could either be stage managed or it could be market force oriented, determined. But in our case, um, I think politics has contributed to a large extent. Um, positively I, or negatively? <laughs> well, positively, somehow, okay. negatively, somehow. I will explain okay. if I have the time. Yeah, but ahead. you see, the, the, the dynamics in the oil price, which of course has contributed, exacerbated it, um, went to a large extent to make it um, a little bit um, painful for the common man. I'm coming from the perspective of the common man, okay? So um, one, oil prices fell, uh, elections around the corner, politics, and um, there's so much, um, let me just be on the middle, there's so much talk about um, wanting to do something new, bring in change for the current government. So people are a little bit scared about what um, the country is going to look like. So there's this race for the dollar as, um, let me say, as a protective hedge Some in case. Some kind of case. buffer. Yes. So it's not really, as it were, um, freely market determined. It's, there's a lot of politics at play. Okay. So now the Nigerian government or CBN is reacting and then there's a lot of panic in the system, so it's exacerbating it, that's all. Oh, yeah, wow. Leonard, uh, what's your take? Uh, what's going on? I mean, a lot of us are novices. We don't understand what's going on. Okay, uh, I think I'll look at it this way. Um, j j just like uh, Dr. Chukwemeka has said, there are two factors here, you know, the way I like to interpret it. The first factor is objective. The other one is subjective. That the objective factors are, um, for example, the structure of the economy, for instance, where Imuno economy, mono product economy. So we just export oil and drive most of our um, public oh, revenue from oil. Now, it simply goes to say that if there is a little shaking in that market, in the international market for oil, it's going to affect us adversely. That's one. Then you also have the issues uh, dealing with the election. And we hear about how funds are moving in dollars. So people, there's, there's a, a raise for dollars. People are putting their money in dollars. So that puts pressure on the Naira. So it That's gives common way. place, demand and supply. Yes, demand and supply. It gives way. So at the point where our source of public revenue is falling, so we don't have that much dollar, and there is so much demand for it, then naturally it will fall. Why, do, why, for instance, do I need to have the dollar? He said something about, you know, people are not uh, skeptical and all that, so people want to you know, go after the, why do I need to have the dollar? Why, I mean, why, why, do, why do I feel safe? Uh, having have dollars, dollars instead yes. of having Naira. Well, um, maybe, maybe not for the locals. Let, 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 let me uh, approach it from the perspective of foreigners who invest in Nigeria. And um, one of the pressures that has come upon the Naira is that there's a massive cash out that is happening at the stock exchange market. And that is the, 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 the subjective factor, that is perception. How, how do the investors perceive the current things that are happening in the economy. If the perception is negative, the foreign investors would like to cash out. It's the portfolio investors. They don't have much stake. They would like to cash out. And cashing out means they will convert their, um, their equity into Naira, so into dollars. So that puts a lot of pressure on the Naira. Now, some Nigerians, um, well, we hear something like people going to store their wealth abroad. For you to do that, you have to convert it into dollars. So that puts further pressure on the Naira. Uh, well, Dr. Eke, yes. is there no way, I mean, we, we hear about CBN intervention, CBN intervention, is there no way the, the federal government can halt the capital flight, you know, the dollars going out and all that? Well, um, I'm an economist by training, and basically we believe in the invisible hand, okay? Um, the government can come in, literally stop internationalization of the problem, that is the dollarization of the economy, but that will not meet international best practices. But for now, what they're doing, I think in my opinion, it's okay. Um, what are they doing? Okay. Yeah, because um, a lot of Nigerians yes. don't know what they're doing. Yes. Um, one, I, I know that um, at the MPC, they, 
devalued the Naira further. They've um, also um, raised the cash reserve re uh, ratio. Uh, they've also raised interest rate because, um, you know, with the free slide of the Naira, with the falling oil prices, normally everybody will fear for inflation. The best would be to mop up excess liquidity. I know everybody's complaining. I know um, we're feeling the pinch. Uh, more so, oh, thank God, the fuel scarcity issue is um, subsiding. Yeah. I know. But for now, that's the best that they can do. Um, let's go back to 2011. Okay, you know, the stock market rocked a bit. Naira flocked a little bit also. Politics, it, it's just there. It's just that after this season, there will be a normalization. I know I might not be able to say much about international oil prices, okay? Because that's beyond our control. But for us here, what they're doing, I think is okay. Anyway, uh, we take a break, Mamode. Let's <laughs> hear what those that are charged with trading in foreign exchange, let's hear what they are saying. Why is it? Do so. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, so yes the yes. foreign uh, exchange uh, bureau people affect our economy, the economy of the nation. The main reason to my own understanding is that we so much rely on foreign goods, that is excessive importations. And uh, I will advise, I would like to seize this medium to advise the government to diversify our economy, especially agriculture, mineral resources, tourism. You know, the, when they are giving the money to the BBC, the money is not enough. You know, it's $30,000. If you can see the, the, the demand, the Nigeria is wider. So people, they have demand, a lot of demand we have. So except if they put more money to the BBC, maybe when they put that on, they will stop less much. When the money is scarce. So it's two things. They said we need to diversify our economy. And then the second man says they need to give more money to the bureau, is, uh, bureau the exchange change operators, yeah. operators yeah. because they have been allocated, I think, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. And um, is, I mean, we've heard those that are involved with this, and of course, we've heard Doctor talk about the uh, things that the invincible hand can do. What further thing can we do? Because a lot of Nigerians have their children abroad. Uh, if you were paying maybe two million naira, if you exchange it in in dollars, today you are paying almost four million for the same uh, 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 the same uh, school fees abroad. So it's affecting a lot of Nigerians. How can we reduce the pain on individual Nigerians? Okay. Um you know, this reminds me, growing up, there's this um, jingle on Radio Nigeria or something that um, says, hard time, no, because it happened to everybody from time to time, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like a national orientation thing. The truth is that um, we are in a time of adversity, and um, we may not be able to do much on the short term to ameliorate this adversity. Now, why, why I'm saying this is because the, the root of this problem is from the structure of the economy. And if we start today to begin to think more critically about the structure of our economy, yes, in the future, we, we stand the chance of being better equipped to handle this kind of scenario. Um, right now, what, what it simply means in, 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 in clear terms is that if you had, say, a millionaire in fixed deposit account, you know, um, six months ago, you, you probably have less than 60% of that same amount of money. So everybody is poorer right now in, in uh, real terms. Including Dangote? Yes, everybody is poorer now. <laughs> because that's the celebrated one. Yeah, yes. but so, he so has <laughs> dropped on the Forbes yes, list. So I think it's the devaluation too. It's the devaluation. So going forward, what, what we're going to say is that the government may not be able to provide immediate answers in terms of cushioning the effect of people who have to spend more than they've spent before now. You know, so. Um, but if we start to think more critically about our, our, the structure of our economy, maybe in, in the near future, we could get to the point where we have a diversified economy. And now, the problem is basically that of productivity, the structure of the economy. And if we get it right, 
our shock absorbers will be built further. But then there's another, pol there's another policy debate that will have to happen in the interim. And that is whether we want to continue on the track of liberalization of current account. Now, in the international monetary system, we, we, we are subscribed. I mean, IMF, WTO, and all that. Now, we have liberalized our capital account. That means we can't place restrictions on movement of foreign exchange. For example, um, an investor can come here with money, invest, and repatriate almost 100% of the capital. And there's no um, 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 issues about that. But we are aware that certain con some countries still have foreign exchange controls. Yes. You know. So do we want to continue the um, total liberalization of, foreign, of, of current accounts in international trade? Or do we want to put in some checks and balances, some mechanisms, um, to define what percentage of profit can go. that can be repatriated from outside the country. Because repatriation places pressure on the local currency. Okay, uh, Le fly. Leonard, I, I need to ask this question because, you, because of what you said. I, we, we live in Abuja. If you drive through Aminu Kano, where you have Samsung and you have LG, you need to stay there for 10 minutes to see the quantity of Volume. goods being bought by Nigerians and take, I mean, going to take it to their homes. Then if you go to zone, zone three, you see the amount of furniture that, and these are all imported. Meanwhile, furniture is supposed to be contraband. Yeah. Are we just going to leave? Just the name. Are we just going to leave our borders porous. open, porous, for, because, Nigeria is import dependent. Can, can I come <laughs> Yes. Back? Okay, you see, um, in the short run, the short run captures vaguely this forthcoming election. In the short run, effects of diversification may not be felt. Okay? Yeah. We may just have to wear out the pains. I suspect the Naira will still go down, honestly. In the long run, yes we can further, you know, what really made the oil price drop was uh, America wanted to cut their dependence on Middle East oil and they went into fracking. And that further provided so much, in fact, it increased the supply of crude oil international market. Forget about what ISIS is doing in the Middle East. Um, that was an answer to a question, how do we diversify? How do we depend less on them? But here in Nigeria, you see, this devaluation would have been a plus for us if we had the capacity to drive it, a manufacturing capacity. Yes, we don't have it. We're going to continue feeling this. But until, I'm sorry, I may step on toes right now, until we stop hunting boys who um, refine oil in their own local ways. See, in the US, if you're, if you're a criminal you mean mastermind. The boys in the Niger Delta? Yes. If you're a criminal mastermind, there's an economics to it and you're so good, you beat the system. They may not throw you to jail. They will bring you in, learn from you. Those boys in the creeks, they are doing this thing. Bring them into the mainstream and let them also help our GDP. Le let me leave that. See, the truth is, Nigeria can, okay, thank God for the fact that we rebased the economic uh, variables and we're now the biggest economy, yes. But you see, we still have the capacity to drive even more. Why? Look at the movie industry. Look at the music industry. These are just microcosms of what we can do. But in the short run, sir, we can't really stop the slide. But in the long run, we're it's helpless. time. We're helpless. Not that we're helpless per se. <laughs> 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 until, the best, <laughs> until the best team gain as a rock. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to become political. Until the best team, uh, whether the president, president, yeah. or the other one. But you see, until then, we may not really feel any effect about diversifying the economy or supplying, you see, supplying oh. to build the change, as yeah. the gentleman said, uh, they only want to sell more. Yeah, yeah they want to sell, make more <laughs> profits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, we're, we're, going to, we're going to take a short break for a commercial message, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, give you guys the final word on this before we go ahead. Don't go away. I hear in Nigeria, nothing is happening. Nothing is working. Nothing is making sense. When I look in Nigeria, I see 
the economy is growing. Young people have better opportunities. The farmers are rejoicing. Transportation is getting better and better. The roads are better than they have been in a long, long time. So why are they lying? Why are they covering the truth? Where is the integrity? Where is the patriotism? Maybe that's why they don't want to debate. People, think about the truth. Think Nigeria. Vote. Good luck, Jonathan, for president. This message is brought to you by Wind of Hope. Last night I had a dream. I was in a land beyond. I saw the heroes of Nigeria. They were in green, white and green. They said, son, how is Nigeria? There is something we need to know. Is it true that in Nigeria the trains are moving again? Is it true that in Nigeria the farmers are bitter? Good luck, Jonathan, for president. Vote PDP. This message is brought to you by Directorate of Media and Publicity, PDP Presidential Campaign Organization. You're still on to the O&M Sunday show. Well, no, our guests are still here with us. We'll give them the last word now. But, um, Leonard, let's uh, begin with you. A lot of people say that in Nigeria, when something goes up, it never it comes down. down. Um, yes, the market forces and you know whatever is happening to make the Naira go on this free fall. Okay. Is there any hope that tomorrow we can push back, you know, uh, you know this situation and probably have the Naira go back to what it was uh, pre this free fall? Okay, I think what this pre uh, presents to us is um, an opportunity. Um, it, it's it's an opportunity for us to rethink the our economic architecture and now we're not like like we have the consensus here that it is not a short-term thing you know so we have to start thinking of the long term so where are we going to from here do we get to a point where uh, volatility in the price of one commodity in the international market will send our economy to its knees so we, we need to start thinking long term on how to diversify our economy the problem is not out there Principally, there are a lot of external forces, but the problem is basically how we handle our domestic uh, uh, economy. Uh, yeah, Doc, the last word for you, and I would like you to be straightforward. Leonard just didn't really answer my question. Will it go back down? It will not go back yeah. down to the levels of maybe 80 naira per dollar or <laughs> 50 naira per dollar. There will be an appreciation. There would be. But are you asking me what should we do to get back to that? Okay, in very one quickly, sentence, if you can. Yes. Is, is that what you're asking me? First of all, let's consume it elections. Secondly, let's get to these boys that are refining oil locally, bring them to the mainstream. Thirdly, let's um, begin to harness our own goods and let the government pay for it to be exported. Subsidize it. In the short run, we'll all have employment created. Okay, okay. so there you go with uh, <coughs> suggestions to government uh, to do the right thing. And, uh, Thank you, Doc. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, Leonard. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for, yeah. for being on <laughs> the one show. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. Thank, Thank, you. you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and um, we, yes, <laughs> the show <laughs> continues, uh, and uh, we're going to be uh, talking to uh, some gentlemen now who, uh, incidentally of taking their destiny into their own hands. Uh, they live in some of these estates in Abuja, where of course they have residence association, uh, and they are going, uh, they're going to be talking to us shortly uh, about uh, what their situation is within those uh, estates. We um, have uh, Oshoke Edmond and um, Okorowa. Ehikoya. Yes, uh, <laughs> just can, can you join us, please? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. It's a pleasure, please. Welcome. welcome. It's a pleasure. Yes, that's it. <laughs> so, Tony. Yes, uh, 
Sometimes um, I go to visit my friends around uh, Sun City. Yeah. And um, y yes, I think that very shortly, uh, before we take a look at this <laughs> situation, uh, we'll just take a break and then uh, we'll get into brass tacks with this discussion. Don't go away. Are you watching Nigeria's biggest late night show? I think the government is doing its, uh, its best. Buhari himself is an issue. Just, yeah, as the Buhari, <laughs> just as the Buhari organization has made Good Luck Jonathan an issue. We have laws, we have institutions set up to fight corruption. Advocacy for the chief of health is born out of what they symbolize. The average Nigerian want to know, what do you have? For him. Panika, you know, it was, was, was with us for a while. What happened? I think we came on a journey and discovered that uh, we are too transparent for him. A banking license was cancelled in one day, an airline license was cancelled in one day. When I was retrenched, it became worse. Uh, at sometimes, to even find food to give to the children was hell. Don't tell us we want a, a, a nation that will be the most powerful black nation on the earth. We all want it. How are we going to get it? O and M Late Show and O and M Sunday Show with Obira Ilo and Mamudia Koga. Tuesdays, Fridays, 11 p.m. and on Sunday, 2 p.m. Are you? Uh, the road is too bad, it's too bad. You know, the people who are in charge will come and uh, do something about the road. Uh, this road is not the problem. Me and you are the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason why we are the problem is nobody in this community has found out how many times has this road been awarded to be contracted. And who was the person that was contracted? I'm going through this road now to go and collect PVC from a doctor's bed. I'm coming from hospital to go and collect PVC. I feel like, I feel like because every day in Akata they worry people here. So if you enter house now, no to back the everything, if you have everything for my head now, that loss is too much. So every time they come and disturb us here. So we are, uh, and government is not repair the road. So we are begging you people, make a tell them, make them stop to come and worry us here. Of those terrible roads. And you know, I was saying that sometimes when I want to go visit my friends in Sunnyville, in Kuba, Kabusa Garden, in those beautiful estates. Most times I don't do it in the night. I'm so scared because you, you can't actually move. Let me ask. You are the you 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 are uh, in Sunnyvale. Yes, it's, yeah, and it's a uh, depot, Barua. Yeah, you're yeah, in Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale Estate. Yes. What was promised these developers when they were going to buy buy uh, land and develop? Was there a promise that those roads, those services would be provided by government? Thank you very or much. Or was it supposed to be provided by the state developers? Thank you very much. That's a very good starting point for us. Because really, when this whole project of um, estate development came into being, the idea was for the developers to develop the infrastructures within their estates and for government to provide the service uh, facilities, that is the access roads, the main roads, the, the, the utilities, the, ro the, the, the water, the electricity, and everything, the access ought to be provided up to the entrance of those estates. But what you have nowadays is a situation where the developers have now turned to government. Apart from they trying to provide the facilities within the estate, within the area they have been given, they are also trying to provide the roads for themselves because the, the governments have been nowhere trying to even provide anything. You just said it. Coming into a home after they had this walk, you now start thinking, how do I navigate at the point? Because it becomes a bottleneck. Interestingly, Kabusa, Kabusa, that same road, that Kabusa road, it's a major road. Because that road is actually an outlet to the city. It takes you all the way down to Abaji. If it was done. If it was done. Yes. It's a major road. So it's, it's, a, it's an economic asset for government, for FCT, to actually do that road. Not only for the residents that you have in there, because within my head state, within Sunnyvale, we have over 1,000 buildings. And within that area, you have over 10 estates. So let us just take an average that we have 
1,000 buildings per estate. You can imagine the volume of people resident in that block, and they don't have assets road, they don't have water. It's, oh. it's, there's no water, apart from the road. There's no, there's I no water. I thought that water there was uh, provided by the government. No. Every, those estates are virtually turned into government themselves, providing every facility needed to make livelihood. Security. Security, water, water maybe, everything. Maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Tony, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's come to you. Sunnyvale is, their, 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 their situation is, you know, 10 times better from, you know, uh, the feedback we have on that road because Sunnyvale is still quite close to the, to, road. To the express. Yeah. But your estate where you, of course, uh, are in charge of the residence association, the uh, Kabusa Gardens, that goes way down in, you know. So how often do you go to the mechanic? How do you guys manage with the road? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, from Sunnyvale to the end of that road is actually about three, three kilometers. Wow. And uh, from Sunnyvale to Kabuza Garden is 2.5 kilometers. That's 2,500 meters. Uh, the problem is this. Going to the mechanic is, uh, well, if you go to any mechanic in Abuja today, they will, when they see your car, they'll say, are you coming from Kabuza Garden? Or you are coming <laughs> from Sunday? That is the question. Whether during the rainy season or during the dry season mm -hmm. is the same thing. You can't have a single car passing on that road without making terrible noise. Yeah. All parts of your vehicle, you have damage and all that. Members who stay in this area, Kabuza Gardens, Sunnyvale, and all uh, same global, in fact, as it is, there are over 15 essays that are fully developed in that area. Like I always tell you, there are supposed to be about 28,000 housing units within that environment comprising of uh, Galadimawa District, Dako District, uh, Lokogoma District, uh, or the, uh, there are a lot of and other a districts, of others. a couple yes. of other districts there. So you discover that all of them are the same. But the worst is that three kilometer stretch of road, which they call Road C39, is the, is the worst. Has it ever been awarded for construction? Uh, Have you guys found out? Yeah, in 2004, during the, the time of uh, Engineer Abagana, when he was the Minister of FCT, that road was advertised for development. I remember very well after he left as developers, the developers had a meeting with the minister who took over from him, which was a, a, a Aerofy. I remember him saying that, well, he didn't know where Abagana kept the money to, for that road to be developed. That actually killed that. The advert was on the 27th of April, 2004, in hmm. one of the newspapers. 11 years ago. 11 years ago. The estates around that area, the development lease agreement was given out to all the developers in, I think, sometime August in 2002, yeah. when it was given to all the developers. And the developers have the responsibility of providing the secondary infrastructure. Why the government? in uh, paragraph five of the development lease agreement, says that the government will provide all primary infrastructures, which includes road, electricity, uh, sewage line, and all that. I can tell you, as a matter of fact, as we speak now, none of those things are done. So, uh, Dipo, what's the situation? What kind of feedback are you getting from the FCT management, the minister of the FCT? What kind of feedback? Uh, we, we, in, in any, by the way, uh, let me let our viewers know that the discussion this afternoon is one-sided uh, because we're just hearing from the people living there. We are already in touch with the FCT management uh, to get the minister uh, to come and talk to us about some of these things. So they will have an opportunity to respond properly to this. But from your own interaction with them, what's the response you're getting? The response is what they told you. It's as if they are not even now where we live around there. Okay. All what they are concerned about is to come and collect tenement rates. And we are telling them, what is the use of tenement rates? Tenement rates is to provide social infrastructure. If you want to tax me, provide the facilities you are taxing me for. Uh, okay. Have you considered going to court uh, to, yeah, we have to force the authorities to 
to know that human beings live there? Yeah, we have written to the government several times, and uh, in December, November, December last year, we were forced to go to court. As a matter of fact, uh, the matter was adjourned to 12th of this month, the 12th of March 2015. What, what are the grounds for which you are going to court now? Uh, we are going to court because, uh, as it were, we are taxpayers. We pay tax and uh, do all things, necessary things that a citizen is supposed to do, but we are living as if we are not Nigerians. Okay. We are only calling <laughs> the government to come to Okay, our okay. Well, <laughs> well uh, the onus is on government to come and tell us why the situation must continue or why it should get better. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on the O and M Sunday show. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish that um, your road will be fixed as soon as possible. I will be expecting you to come during the day and not at night. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I think we just walk over, yes, to, we'll the, walk over to, the, to, the, to the sofa to the, yes. where and we uh, are expecting <laughs> our dear friend, uh, okay. one of the hottest properties in Abuja, uh, to join us. Il, come on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> mm. uh, how are you? <laughs> mm. So, you know, how do you pronounce? You know, I love your songs. Thank you very much. But unfortunately, I have a difficulty <laughs> uh, pronouncing your name. It's so actually very easy. Funny enough, I was, I, was behind, I was behind the camera when I had you guys trying to um, pronounce my name. <laughs> it's, it's actually very, very easy. Um, I'll pronounce it as L K Kudi. L K Kudi. Okay, let me, let me give you guys a brief story about how I, how I came about. Okay. That. Okay, now I used to be funny enough. Let me just chip in something. You see, Doctor A K that you guys had on the show. Yeah. He used to be a lecturer of mine when I was in school because okay. I also graduated from the um, Department of Economics, University of Abuja. All so right. He used to be precisely my exam officer, and then he took me in a particular course before I got. I think I was in my three hundred. It was my final year then in school. I, I didn't know that. You should have joined the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what should we do to the <laughs> falling Naira? <laughs> Basically, think, let, let's play him that. <laughs> let him talk about music. Okay, okay, about music, okay, okay, but okay so um, taking you back to my brief story, um, when I used to be in school then, um, I was I, I used to mime I used to mime songs of yes. um, very big artists and then and then so in that in that manner my in that like my friends used to call me the lyrical king. The okay. little lyrical, 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 lyrical king. king. Okay, the lyrical king. Yeah, that's how I came about the name LK. And then my real names are Iswala or Lakunle. Okay. So, so or Lakunle they came about the Kudi. So, yeah. um, it's, it's supposed to be a clipped word. Yeah, a clipped word because um, blending is supposed to be um, a mixture of two complex. Oh, is it possible for just for us to take, take like one minute? Yeah, I think we can. Let's let's let's, let's yeah. watch this. Let's let's hear yes. him for one minute. Kudi. <laughs> oh, L K Kudi. Don't cool forget. King. Don't yeah. Don't forget. Cool King Kudi. Uh, so, cool so King. what was this? I mean, this was like your big one, this explosion. Yeah, it was. It was more. It was basically like my introduction to the music scene. So, um, I I had the privilege to work with a um, very big brother in the industry, um, Inyanya the Kuke um, Kuna. So, um, we just it wasn't it wasn't as difficult as such. Um, first. Firstly, I, I owe everything to God for, for the ease because looking at myself then and looking, my, uh, looking at myself now, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. So, okay. um, yeah, so there's a difference between everything that's, still that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, still, I'm still looking forward to, to, to getting somewhere. So um, we, we came about doing the song when um, I, I did my part basically in Abuja and then he did his in Lagos. But um, for my is it is a collab? Yeah, it's a collaboration. Yeah, it's a collaboration we had, and then we just we just we just came up with something somehow, and then I don't know. To my greatest surprise, it, it was it was a song that okay for for in Abuja it was a song that that top uh, most radio charts and every and most um, particular some very selective um, TV stations and then majorly radio radio stations, and then I, I really want to appreciate 
all the OAPs out there showing me love. Like for no reason, they just took me as their son, their brother, and then started showing me love. That's how. They all so started. when are we getting the next uh, single or the next album? I just did. I'm, I'm I'm always working very hard. Like I'm a studio brat, so um, I I'm always, always in the, the I'm always in the studio doing things. Like so. Funny enough, um, last week I, I dropped a new song titled Firewood. So firewood is the name of so people. people firewood. Yeah, firewood. Yeah. So what were you, what were you saying? Easy yeah. to cut. <laughs> <laughs> firewood. Okay, basically firewood was talking about me uh, me being lost in um, in a particular lady. Um, I picked up my interest in, and then I was just trying to you know you know there's there's this human part of you that you know it's it's a, it's a general saying that goes in in the African setting that says body no be firewood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it tries yeah, okay. to explain the fact that despite the fact that you're human. There's still this side of you that makes you lose concentration when you. You know, you know. Now you're talking about ladies. <laughs> I'm just worried, like a lot of. Have you heard the song? Old firewood is if you cash. You know what I mean? No. Anyway, no, let's no, go no. back. To <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind. You know, you know, you know, my mother gives gives I mean, keeps uh, uh, deceiving himself that he can sing. So you don't you don't mind. Uh, everybody can but have a try. Every, 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 a lot of Nigerians are really worried. Yeah. About the lurid images yeah. we see in videos. Yeah. And, and I have this opportunity. Tell me, can't a video be complete without showing naked women that women. are showing their cleavages? Twerking and, and, all, that. and all that. <laughs> you know? Okay, true true be told, true be told. Um I, I think I think I think music itself is an art. And then um, the inspiration behind um, each artist doing and um, getting to carry out their, their various um, songs and writing their composing their various songs uh, is what I can't I can't really define. As for me, my inspiration comes from the passion. It comes from the environment. You can give me you can give me uh, aside aside me doing this. Sometimes you, you find me doing music because um, I, I, I do sometimes for the general public. But there are times where I've had to write songs precisely for a particular um, purpose and an objective. So the, the inspiration behind you doing your music is what matters. So I don't know, as for people out there that do, I, I wouldn't deny the fact that I don't, I don't sing about um, ladies once in a while. It's, it's actually necessary sometimes because some people say women... Makes the world go around. So, so aside that, but um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go the extra mile to always um, be that negative example to, especially my, my fans out there. Um, my, my fans out there are supposed to be from age 16 to 24, 25. But so can, you, can you do a video without all the twerking, all the ladies and, or can you, you know, just uh, looks like that's what you guys call the, <laughs> the Maggie in the soup. <laughs> very well, yes, now, very well, yes. I've, I've, okay, there's a song I did, there's a song I did, um, there's a viral video I had on YouTube. Um, um, I, I covered the song originally, um, it's titled Ireke, Ireke Baby. Um, the original cover of the song was, to be, uh, was supposed to be Sugar Cane Baby, but I did mine as Ivy K Baby. And then in the, in, the, in the picture I depicted, it wasn't, I, I did nothing about showing any lady or nothing. Even Vanilla video here, you could actually see girls dance, but well, it wasn't as bad as that, such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there, there are ways you can get to pass a message without, without getting to go the, the, in, in the very cliche manner of um, having to what's, put What's your future looking like? I mean, where, are you going to throw away economics? No, I'm um, funny enough. Because the way you are turned out, you can never work in a bank with this hair. <laughs> <laughs> there's, one, there's, one thing, there's one thing I tell myself, and uh, that's, that's what has kept me going. I tell myself something that there's all this very thin line between achievement and fulfillment. I would rather want to stay fulfilled. Even if I don't get paid, I will stay fulfilled. By but doing what yeah, you love by, to by do. doing what I know how to do best. But on, on the other hand, if, if, if I'm forced to, look, okay, it's my, it's my dad's biggest dream for me to become a PhD holder in the, in the field of economics and everything. Not like, not like I wasn't able, I went to school, I graduated, I stopped. I, I did my NYC and everything. But then I, I, still, I still felt, I still had this feeling in me that I would rather feel very fulfilled doing what I love doing than doing things because of achievement. Okay, it can be, oh yeah, my son is um, a banker, yeah, yeah. or <laughs> my, my, son, my son is this, the lecturer there, but what, what is that? What is that? You're so proud of you with the music you're playing. I'm very your well. fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I, feel, I feel very honest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Yes, boss. Thank All you right. very much. Nice to meet you. So Thanks for having uh, me on your show, boss. Yes, to. Uh, I hope you come again. Very well, you drop new well, videos. Do let us know. Very yeah. well, very well, boss. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. God bless you, boss. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, Obiara, we've come again to the end of uh, the Sunday show. I want to thank everybody out there uh, for staying with us uh, and watching. And uh, until Tuesday night, 11 p.m., when we'll be back. My name is Mamude Akure. Have a uh, swell Sunday. Yes, join us on hblnews.com if you want to watch this show and, all, and, uh, and uh, other shows. I'm Obi Orilo from Abuja, Nigeria. Have a wonderful week.
back to me.